And we are live and we are back. Let's go. I'm Corey, one half of the Corner Full Effect podcast. And I'm back like I never left with another episode of Wealth Wednesdays. This is number 14, I believe. I don't even know what my number is on this one. I just hope that it's right. And then I check before I record and I just assume those numbers are correct. But I could be off a number. But back like I never left with another episode of Wealth Wednesdays. The Corner Full Effect Podcast has returned. If you have not checked out our Monday episode, Jordan has finally returned for his paternity leave. He's obviously going to do his best to continue to record every week. So hopefully those are starting back up. But obviously, if, you, if we miss a Monday for the health and wealth, I'm thinking about renaming that. Just talking about renaming health and wealth instead of just Corner Full Effect. But if we miss one of those, that's because Jordan is still a new dad and he's still working on getting his schedule, quote unquote, back to normal. But the last episode is back. Jordan on there talking about what's it like being a new dad and still working out. Boy, that episode is crazy. And also, too, the episodes are going to be closer back to an hour because Jordan has other obligations. You can't hear his son probably crying sometimes in the back room because his room is right next to Jordan's office. But on Wealth Wednesdays, we get straight to the financial information. But before I get started, oh, dang, you already see the topic because I'm sloppy. Make sure I hit that like and that share button. And make sure y'all subscribe. Please help out the YouTube algorithm on the podcast platforms. Please leave them rating reviews. All right. If you have any questions, concerns, you can reach me at silent underscore Corey. And you can reach Jordan at Stop Stalling J. That's Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And all of our information is in the show notes for my financial coaching and for Jordan's personal training for Finally Fit, his business. Or you can go to the website, finallyfit.live. All right. But y'all know how it is on Wealth Wednesday. I already, already ruined it. So what are we going to talk about today? Okay. How to become a millionaire. I've already ruined it, but let's. I'm struggle streaming like crazy on the on the episode 53. My Wi-Fi went out real quick for whatever reason. As soon as I decided to share the screen, now I see what people are talking about. The man. As soon as I share my screen to drop some gems on obesity numbers in America, my internet want to drop out. I still went back and I shared it, but I was I was flaming it up, you know, off camera because I said I was still going to be on camera on the YouTube video, but my audio had dropped because my computer is doing the audio. Regardless, though. Um, I'm struggle. I'm extra struggle streaming. I got to clean up my background. Y'all don't even see the mess by my feet for YouTube. And um, what is it? We turn. I don't care what this is. Can y'all see that? I okay. can't. But um, my computer. Windows always want to give me an update about something when I don't need it. But yeah, I got to fix my mic. My mic is messing up. Every everything is just breaking right now. But that's not gonna stop me from getting into this topic on how to become a millionaire. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna share my screen. I still struggle on figuring out how to share my screen. But we about to get to it. Hey, y'all know where we're going, right? CNBC. Shout out to the Fidelity ad. No sponsor, okay? But this is... I think we got a semi-decent name this time. We got a very easy name, name, Tom. But I think Corley, C-O-R-L-E-Y. Y'all know these names are crazy every time I, I come to these articles. But CNBC article, I spent five years interviewing 233 millionaires. Here are the six habits that made them ultra wealthy. I'm interested to see if they discuss um, if they're millionaires or decamillionaires, like 10 million plus or, you know, 100 million plus, whatever it is. Um, as y'all know, I do not look at these articles before we get started. But this is Tom Corley. All right, here we go. This October 9th, 2022. Striking it rich is not a fluke. OK, yeah, it takes hard work. Thanks for letting us know. Also, I was going to say real quick, this article makes CNBC. He only studied 200. Let me not click this as a hyperlink. He only studied 233 people. So when people talk about, you know, have you done the study or it's anecdotal, you only need 233 people, apparently, to make CNBC. I mean, that's that's not that many people right now. How good is your studying, right? Your research practice That's one thing. But like you don't need thousands upon thousands of people to, you know, have a nice study. Anyways, though, he said 177 of them were self-made. Let's see how close that is. 75%, 75%, right? Those are around the Dave Ramsey numbers. I mean, obviously, the benefit of having a larger pool is you can get a little bit better in percentage, but 75% of millionaires self, self-made, according to this study, and find out how they make use of their time. He's Based on his research, he identified six principles they all share that help them build wealth. So we're going to talk about these six principles, right? Obviously, I'm not a millionaire, but we're going to see, right? Maybe if I enact these principles, we're going to see how long it takes me to become a millionaire, even if I make it by using these principles. All right, the best part is that anyone can implement them. Okay, so anybody can do this. Great. 
Self-made millionaires are constantly learning. Okay, autodidactic. For most millionaires he interviewed, self-learning and improvement were top priorities. He said 49%, so half of them reported they took a few minutes every day to learn new words. And 61% shared that they practiced new skills, sport, online class, etc. for at least two hours. Okay, another 63% said they listened to audiobooks. Okay, reading. And then 71% said they often read self-help books. Again, reading again. Audiobooks is right the audio of books but you know so 63 to 70 percent said they, they did some type of reading right and many of them gravitate toward biographies that's people right you research people have been successful if you want to learn how to become a basketball player you should research basketball players if you want to learn how to become a millionaire you should research millionaires billionaires slash successful people second thing is they learn millionaires listen more they listen <laughs> they listen more than they talk do i need to work on this one i actually listen a lot Contrary to popular belief, one strategy that came up many times during the interviews was the five to one listening rule. In group settings, for every minute, every minute they spoke, they listened for five minutes. So good, get your stopwatch on, get your Apple Watch, and make sure you time yourself. This helped them to strengthen their work relationships and then get a number of different perspectives on a given issue. Right? Ask some quick, short, precise questions, and then just gathering and listening and understanding the information or the answers to those questions. And I always believe there's no such thing as a quote unquote wrong answer. I always think like if you had to take a multiple choice test and I could give you all of the wrong answers to the test, would you, and you right, you could just memorize them right before the test. You couldn't use them when you're taking the test, but if you just memorize all the wrong answers, would you go, be okay with that? And for multiple choice tests, the answer should be yes, because if you have all the wrong answers for multiple choice, by definition, you have all the right answers as well. OK, if A, is A, if A, B and D are incorrect, right, for question 10, then you know that C is the correct answer. OK, so there's nothing wrong with having incorrect information. It is making sure you do your research and understanding what's right and what's wrong, because a lot of times, as I say, like success is, you know, a combination of all of your failures. A lot of times people are making mistakes because they just don't know what's, what not to do. Right. It's not that they don't know what to do. It's they don't know what not to do. It's like with investing. It's not about how much you make. It's about how much you keep. It's like you just need to make sure you kind of don't lose some money. Like don't try to hit all the winners, but like definitely don't hit the losers. Like know what not to do. Like don't sell right now. All right. Don't when the economy's going down, like know what not to do, the bad things. And a lot of times if you can avoid just making the bad mistakes, sort of the tortoise of hair uh, situation where you just take your time, you make that slow, steady progress and do your best to have progress and not regress. You're going to end up coming out um, ahead of most people in the long term, not short term, but long term. OK, and then he said 81 percent uh, said they actively saw feedback from others every day, both inside and outside of work. feedback. I mean, I guess but I guess what kind of feedback that is. Anyway, the third thing is self-made millionaires and build great teams. What are the chances? Oh, my goodness. So second thing is. They listen more than they talk. And the first thing is they're constantly learning. But the third thing is the first thing I recommend. I don't know if these are in any type of order. Um, They didn't say. But the third thing here is build great teams. First thing I recommend is to build the team. First thing I recommend. He said 86% of self-millionaires worked on an average of 50 hours or more a week. Okay, you got to put in that time. Okay, so at least uh, they had worked on average 50 hours a week. But they didn't work alone. Many succeeded because they focused on their strengths, right? And figured out how to outsource their weaknesses. Yes, I tell people all the time, I don't do things I'm not good at. That makes no sense. Now, you should try things and figure out how right good you are at them, work on improving that skill. But if you notice that somebody is better than you at something, just let them do it. All right. And that's why I say, this is why I recommend playing sports child to football because it's the, the, the biggest team sport. But it's just like, Shout out to Bill Belichick, one of Anne Arundel County's finest. I'm doing my best to come in second place for Anne Arundel County's finest. If I can top Bill Belichick, that'd be great. But it's like, do your job on the Cincinnati. It's like, bro, or sis, whatever y'all want to be identified as. It's like, just do what your job is. And somebody's better than you at it. Let them do it, trying to wear all these hats. And it's like, it's not worth it, bro. It is not worth it. Okay, yeah, they outsource their weaknesses. They do not possess a particular skill, right? Let's say you don't got the skill set at all, but you need it, right? You delegate it. And then you can focus more on whatever you're good at, right? Focus on the bigger picture. I'm not even reading this stuff. I'm just, just shooting off right now. And have more time, mental energy to execute, right? You focus more on what you're good at, and then you outsource what you're bad at. Surrounding themselves with people who shared their vision made it possible to go the distance with their goals. All right. Self-made millionaires dream big. Well, what are the chances, right? You have an extremely, extremely large, big goal, 
And if you fall short, you're probably going to be ahead of people, right? If you just shoot to be a millionaire, you only get halfway there, you'll be only have $500,000. But if you shoot to have right, a super big goal, $100 million, right? Even if you get only 1% of the way there, there you go. That's how you get your million dollars, right? 50% in one situation gets you 500K, 1% in another gets you a million. All right. They study user, the study show, they use a strategy called dream setting. They sat down and wrote out right there, deal perfect life. What it looked like in 10 years to the future, right? Planning ahead. One of the millionaires in my study was passionate in this study. He was passionate about wine because it's not my study. They're passionate about wine and thought they could make millions investing in it. Their family and friends didn't think it was possible, but he was undeterred, right? Even when people are giving you doubts and shooting you down, you still got to push forward. It's actually good to figure out who's not going to support you. So you can just, right, just, you know, cut them out and figure out who is going to support you, right? Over the course of 15 years, became an expert in the, in, expert in the industry. 2001, this person liquidated a small fraction of their wine collection, was able to buy their dream home on a beach in Florida. Shout out to Florida with no state taxes. They made $4 million in earnings all because he refused to give up on an idea, right? Yeah, I mean, you obviously, there needs to be some foundation, right? You can't just think you're going to do anything. But if you really take your time, do your research and put it in the work to do something, you got to be willing to put in this set of decade, or at least a decade, right? Over the course of 15 years. Okay, so first says the, I call dream setting, right? You picture your perfect life, you know, 10 years in the future. And this person from the wine scenario, right? 15 years, they put in work. All right, fifth thing is self-made millionaires prioritize. <laughs> they prioritize their health. Shout out to the Court and Full Up at Podcast, where we discuss health and wealth and finance and fitness and everything in between. And we want to make sure you save more and say less and keep making better your best. Yes, yes. This is all for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> yes, you, health is wealth, right? You have to take care of your health. If you did not. <laughs> it's just funny because we... we we already discussed these things. So you should actually just tune into us. Just you need to take care of your health. First thing I recommend build a team and having a fitness person, doctor person, whatever you want to call it, someone in the health sphere, I highly recommend that that person is on your team. So good health translate into longevity. You want to know how you make a lot of money? Live for a long time, right? If you if you only live for 60 years, you know, you're you're, you're going to have less, you know, you would make way more money if you lived to be 90. I mean, you don't got to never mind. I'm going to talk about dying right now. But yes, great health translates into longevity, which means more time to create more wealth. I mean, it's simple logic. One million, and not, not to mention, too, <clears throat> people's largest expense outside of taxes, but your some of your large one of your largest expenses is your health care. Like it's crazy how people complain how expensive healthcare is in America, which you're not wrong. It does cost a lot of money, but then you're not proactive and do everything you can to reduce your health care expenses. Or at least take the route of reducing your expenses when you know healthcare is going to be at its highest for you, which is, you know, in that retirement age, right? Post 65 type of situation. But the amount of people who will get to retirement age with no money and they haven't taken care of their health their entire life, it's like, how are you going to retire with this mortgage and these healthcare expenses? That's insane. You got to keep your job because usually your healthcare is going to be cheaper for you to get when you're employed. Versus when you're retiring, you got to get out outside healthcare, outside of your employer. My goodness. One millionaire struggled with her weight for a long time. One day, she decided to walk one mile a day. After a month, she increased to two miles, then three. Yes, yeah, small steps. Okay, I mean, if you get on a budget, drink water. We try to tell y'all, we talk, we talk, we talked about an episode 53, but it's like, y'all guys got to get in and start doing something. Like, there's all these different methodologies and you know, trains of thoughts but it's like at the end of the day you have to put in the work and this lady made the first step and doing if you ain't never exercised a mile could be a lot it's nothing wrong with doing like half a mile just like what you can do right walk up the street and back but as you can see here right she started doing one mile a day then increased to two miles and then three that's slow and steady progress and by the time this uh tom interviewed her she had run three marathons Okay, for those who don't know, marathon is 26.2 miles. All right. That's you did, did almost 100 miles right there. She attributed her energy, focus, and drive to succeed in parts of these incremental fitness goals that changed her life. Yes, I mean, if you want to improve your brain's cognitive ability, exercise is one way. Okay. You, you, <laughs> 
it helps to be healthy if you want to quote unquote be smarter and get more done as far as a brain power perspective. <laughs> Last thing, sixth thing, self-made millionaires make their own luck. As they say, luck is a combination of hard work and opportunity. All right. And in this Tom says he's not talking about the luck you have in Vegas. A whopping 94% of millionaires in my study said that they never gamble. One of the knocks on a small on a small study, I guess I'm contradicting myself. I, a lot of a lot of people gamble. I, and I guess when it says never gamble, I would say like they have never gambled in their life, or you know, gambling isn't like, you know. Something they frequently do. It's like when I go to the doctor and ask me, do I drink? I don't drink. I have never not drink, drank, right? But I mean, I do drink like super special occasions, like, you know, birthdays, things like that. But I don't go to people's birthdays every year. So I can, and I can easily, quote unquote, never drink again, right? But you gotta, you have an issue there when you're dealing with addictions like gambling, like drinking. It's like, what do you mean you never do? What do you do? Do it sometimes. So I wouldn't put it, but so much, much weight on 94% of millions and studies said that they, they never gamble. But the, would they that mean they've never gambled in their entire life? I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that. <laughs> luck is luck in this context, it's not happenstance, but taking a gamble on something new. Look at that play on words. They never gamble, but taking a gamble on something new. Millionaire, the millionaire shared an ability to see what is invisible to others and come up with creative solutions and alternate routes to success. Ultimately, persistence creates opportunities and luck eventually comes to those who refuse to quit on their dreams and goals, right? So hard work, AKA refusing to quit on your dreams and goals, and then hard work plus opportunity equals luck. So persistence creates luck, right? So just continue putting that work, that dedication, eventually the opportunity will come. And if you, you know, it hasn't popped off for you yet, you gotta keep putting that work. What's the, Colonel Sanders, KFC. When did he start KFC? Six something, something like that. So, you know, just got to keep putting that work. What else? Let's see. Oh, it's giving us some background information on Tom. Tom is an accountant, financial planner, and author of Rich Kids, How to Raise Our Children to Be Happy and Successful in Life, Effortless Wealth, and Rich Habits, the Daily Success Habits of Wealthy Individuals. I think that's it for this. From food stamps to 1.6 million, I work just five hours a week. That's different. All right, y'all. That's it for this article. Cause that's I've I've been wanting to get something under 20 minutes. That's that's what I've been trying to do. I wasn't trying to fly through this. I'm like, I'm trying to get these definitely no more than 30 minutes, but I'm trying to get closer to that 20 minute mark. Oh, let me let me put myself on the screen. All right, y'all, how to become a millionaire again. <clears throat> the sixth step: self-made millionaires are constantly learning. Second thing is self-made millionaires listen more than they talk, the five to one rule. So they listen for five minutes for every one minute that they speak. Third thing is self-made millionaires build great teams. But if you've listened to this podcast, first thing I recommend is to build the team. Self-made millionaires dream big. Yes, have large goals. That way, if you fall short, you still got have gotten a lot done. Fifth thing is self-made millionaires prioritize their health. This is the Corner Bullet Fed Podcast where we talk about health and wealth. So what are the chances there? And then self-made millionaires make their own luck. Luck is a combination of hard work and opportunities or when they intersect, should I say. So those six things, again, this is by Tom Corley, CNBC article, and this came out on October 9th. I think it was last edited. No, yeah, it's published on October 9th. Yep. All right, y'all. That's it. Some, I think there was, those were some, those some good tips. Let me think. So they get me. Yep. Constantly learn. Yes, definitely constantly learn. Yes. Listen more than you speak. Build, build a team. Yep. Dream big. Proud to yourself. I think the one that people really really um really going to miss out on is six prioritize your own luck because a lot of people talk about they don't have the same right 24 hours in a day and it's like you got to continuously put in that work you got to work on prioritizing things a lot of the reason you don't have what you want in life is because you're not properly prioritizing you may be putting in the work but you may not be putting in enough work right quality but not quantity you got to put in them hours right shout out to the ten thousand hour rule but you got to put in them hours all right, shot. All right, got to got to put in them shots in the gym. That De definitely. Well, I guess the biggest thing in America, people taking care of their health, because you know the obesity and overweight numbers are so high in America. Obviously, you have to take care of your health, right? I mean, it's going to be hard to put in work, right, and and build whatever type of wealth you want to build if you're having all these health applications. Obviously, if you have chronic issues or genetic issues, that's a little bit different. But most people, your issues were brought about by yourself, poor, poor eating habits, poor diets and lack of exercise, not or both. Right. You're eating terrible and you don't work out. Jesus Christ. 
Okay. I think people know you got to dream big. I mean, I think quote unquote, being a millionaire is a big dream for most people, but you know, especially now shout out to inflation, a million dollars, a million dollars for millennials, right? Tomorrow you want to have a million dollars, 30, 40 years now. Nah, you want to, you want to increase that number. You want to probably get close to like 10 million. Um, yeah, build great teams. I already said build build a team. I mean that that's that's simple logic. And not th- this is from a team from a work perspective, but even outside of whatever you're doing to generate your income, right? I talk about having the, the lawyers on your teams, having the financial professionals on your team, uh, having the people in the healthcare sphere on your team. All those different things, highly recommended. Yep, listen more than you talk, and then you know read. Obviously, that makes sense. You need to continuously learn. And number one and number two are sort of the same thing: learn learning from other people. But all right, y'all, that's it. Again, make sure y'all hit that like button. Make sure y'all share, share, and subscribe. Make sure y'all leave them rate reviews on the podcast platforms. Again, if you have any questions or concerns, you can reach me at Sila underscore Corey. That's Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. For my co-host Jordan, you can reach him at Stop Stalling J. That's Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as well. His business page is Finally Fit. That is on Facebook and Instagram. And then his website is finallyfit.live. Again, the 530 um, workout classes have started back up so although on mondays and wednesdays you will be able to get the zoom link if you sign up for the subscription and get the live classes for me personally my financial coaching is fifty dollars for one one hour session a month or a hundred dollars for up to one one hour session a week and all of these notes and links are in the show notes in the description on youtube dang look at my watch going off just in time too look at that that's perfect all right, y'all. If you have any questions, concerns, just read out to us. Um, reach out to us if you have any topics that you want us to discuss. Just let us know. But if not, we out of here. So remember to save more and say less and keep making better your best. And I will catch y'all in the next one.